Welcome back to the LeapFrog BI Getting Started video series. My name once again is Paul Felix. I'm the founder of LeapFrog BI. And in this video, the second video of the series, we're going to be picking up from where we left off, which is we created a couple of stage components. Now we're going to create the entire data flow that's required to load and maintain our little dimensional model. So let's get started. Okay, so as I mentioned, we've got our environment set up. We've created a few stage components. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to create all the data flow required to load a little star schema. And this is the dimensional model we're trying to create. We have three dimensions and one fact. Customer, product, and date dimensions, one fact table, sales. Once again, this is our foundation design pattern that we're following for this little project. We've already created our stage components. Now in this video, we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be using pattern-based development. Uh, we could go through and create each of these transformations and objects one by one at the component level, but since this is a known pattern, we're going to generate all of this using pattern-based development. All right, so let's get started. Jumping back over here to my target environment, I'm already logged in. I'm going to go over to the project area. I can see that I have my getting started project opened up here. I'm going to go to my stage components and I can see that I have my three components here. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to generate a customer dimension using this stage component as the source. So it doesn't matter how I get there. I go to any of the component areas and select new pattern. Now what you're going to have here in this pattern area is a list or an inventory of all of the design patterns that are available to you. I'm not going to go through all these and describe them at this point. I'm just going to go straight here, which is this design pattern, which is going to create a dimension using an existing stage component, and it's going to apply load status tracking. So it's going to generate this pattern for me. Select the pattern, and then I need to complete this short form in order to uh, generate the pattern. So let's start at the top. First of all, which component is the source to this pattern? It's my stage customer uh, component. Uh, and everywhere that we have a name requirement, I'm going to leave the defaults, which is going to use a default uh, name. Uh, in this case, I'm going to name this component after the source. So my PSA component name, for example, will be customer as well, which works because we're using schema separation. My PSA will be in a PSA schema call, uh, in a table named customer. Okay, so for the rest of the selections, I'm going to quickly fill them out here. The PSA destination connection, I'm using my PSA connection. And then record time. Record time is a really important setting, uh, but for this little uh, video series, I'm going to leave this set to the load time. I'm going to use the time that I collect the record to represent the effective time of that record transformation. This is a load status uh, tracking area. I'm going to take all the defaults and put this in my transform schema. And then for the dimension itself, I'm going to call it customer, put that in my DW schema, create an unknown member, and customer ID is my natural key. I'll keep the other attributes uh, fields there as included attributes on my dimension. Now when I click design pattern, generate design pattern, that, that's what's going to happen. All of this is being generated for me. So let me go to the source component here. And I can see that now my stage component has all of these other components downstream. I have a PSA. I have a transformation, which is doing my collection of unprocessed records for PSA. And I have a dimension. And then I also have an update component, which is going to mark those records as process once the dimension is loaded successfully. OK, we need to do that same thing again this time for product. So let's do it again. Go to my new pattern area. I'm using the same design pattern, DP1001. This time I'm going to be using my product dimension as the source and pretty much I'm going to make the same exact selections. Put my transformation in the transform area. I'm going to call this product. My dimension itself will be in the DW schema and product ID is my natural key. Generate that pattern. And within a couple of seconds here, I'll have the entire data flow created for this dimension. Hopefully you can see here how quickly this is happening. This is where you're really going to begin to see the value in the LeapFrog BI platform. 
So now we have two dimensions. I have a product dimension. I'll go ahead and click on that so you can see that I have some, this is my dimension detail definition. I have my natural key selected here for me. By default, everything's being tracked to SCD1. Uh, I've got my, my target field names here. I can make any changes I want. Like, for example, I could change the name of this field from subcategory name and just call it subcategory. I'll do the same thing for category name, and I'll just call that category. So it's just a matter of making the selections that you want to, uh, to um, define your, your data flow. For now, I'll leave the rest of this uh, with the default selections. And I need to create one more dimension, and that is a date dimension. Well, we didn't create a source component for the date dimension because there's no reason to. We know what a date dimension is. Leaf for BI is a data warehousing platform. All I need to do is tell it to generate a date dimension for me. So I'll call this new dimension date, and I'm going to put it in my DW schema. Um, I kind of went through that pretty quick. Let me um, do this. If I click Create New here under Dimension, I'm given a list of templates that I can select from. Well, DP D3000 is the one I selected, which is a date dimension. By making that selection, many of the things that need to be defined for creating that date dimension are already known. It knows what a date dimension is. It knows the natural key is going to be some type of uh, a variation of a date. So when I go and define the details of that component, I'll be able to see that I, I can actually make this date dimension behave however I want. What I'm going to do is just take most of the default selections here. Uh, for the time interval, I'm going to use day. For the range of the date dimension, I'm going to keep stick with the static range of 1975 to 2025. Uh, you can auto-grow the dimension. You can select the type of surrogate key, whether it's a smart key or an identity. Name the surrogate. So there's, there's selections you can make here, but I'm going to skip over all that. What I am going to do, though, is select a set of attributes here and generate those attributes. Now, don't feel like you're stuck with the attributes that are auto-generated here, because I can always go back over and create expressions using the LeapFrog BI Expression Builder, which knows the entire, uh, uh, the relevant portion of the T-SQL language. It has that built in. Uh, and then once I have an expression which transforms a date to some other format, I can then use that as a source for any field. And that's exactly what that generate attribute step does. So I can see here, for example, here's a, um, a, an at, a uh, expression, which is going to create a version of a date dimension and it actually if you look at the fully written out expression here it's putting a queue in front of the quarter name so it's just a, a derivation of the date and then that uh, if you look in the lineage map down here you can see it's used as the source for this field I'll jump straight to that field I can see in fact this is the expression that's used as a source for this field and it's given me the name of the quarter Okay, there's a lot more to go into there when we start talking about building expressions, um, but I'm going to skip over that once again for the sake of brevity here and speed. We have our date dimension in place. I need to build one more object, which is a fact um, table, and I'm going to use design patterns once again. If I scroll down here, I can see I have a couple of fact tables. These green components are actually representing fact tables. I'm starting from a stage component, which we already have in place. Fact from stage, I'm going to apply load status tracking and grain verification. So this is the, com the design pattern I'm going to use. And it's really more of the same here. Select the source. It's going to be my sales source. I'm going to put PSA in my PSA connection. Uh, I'm going to put my transformations in my transformation connection definition area. And uh, I'm going to take all the defaults for the names, call my fact table sales, put it in the DW connection definition area. This fact table is related to all three of the dimensions that I have available. So I'll select all of them for the dimensionality of the fact. And of course, that's what's going to determine which foreign keys are created for me. Now down here, I have the fact table definition, fact field definition. I have two degenerate dimensions here. Uh, and for measures, I have a few measures. Unit price, line total, those are my measures. And then for the the, the fields or the keys that I need to, do, to create my natural keys, or my foreign keys, excuse me, I have a few of those here as well. And that's it. With that, we can generate the pattern and let LeapFrog BI create, uh, 
create all of the components and all the related logic that's required to actually um, uh, make this pattern possible. So let me go to the source component and let's look at what was created. So here we are at our source stage component, sales. We created a PSA, a uh, sourcing transformation, a granularity transformation, and a fact table. And then finally, we have this update component, which is going to mark records as having been processed once the load process completes. Now, I'm going to jump over here to this fact table because you might have noticed one thing that we did not create or we did not define in that design pattern is the details for how we're going to go look up our foreign key values. For example, if I look at this customer dimension foreign key, we have to tell the system how to uh, uh, create that relationship. How do we establish that join? So in my foreign key definition here, I'm going to cl click the foreign key K1, which is the alias for this particular foreign key. And I have a lot of options here. I'm going to skip most of them for now, I, but I do have to have an on clause. So I'm going to create an expression. Uh, well, it defaulted to exactly what I want here. I'm going to be creating an expression based on a number exact, meaning not a float or a real, but a, um, uh, a big int, int, those type of values. And uh, it's pretty simple in this case. We're going to take our source customer ID and relate it to the natural key of our customer dimension, which is also customer ID. I'll call that Joe customer. Uh, Joe, I just use that prefix, which uh, stands for join on expression. You can use whatever you like. I select that value. I can see my on clause here. Update the foreign key, and now I have my on clause defined. I'm going to do the same thing for date. Create a new expression. And in this case, we're looking for an exact match on a date time extended value. So I'll go to order date here. Call it Joe date. Make that selection in my foreign key definition and update the foreign key. And then finally we have product, which we need to do the same thing for. And in this case, it's going to be product ID is equal to product ID. Pretty simple in this case. Of course, this gets a lot more complex, um, but hopefully this is giving you some understanding of how, how you accomplish these tasks. All right, we have our foreign keys defined, and that actually completes the, des the development of our entire data flow to create a three-dimension, one-fact dimensional model. If I click on this little button right here, it's going to show me that entire data flow. So I can see I have a product dimension, which is sourced from product stage table. I have a customer dimension, which is sourced from uh, my customer stage table. I have a dimension here for date, which doesn't have a source. It's just being generated by the fraud BI. And then my fact table is being generated using these, this fact stage table. So that's it. Let's jump back over here. Now, hopefully, um, it's pretty obvious to you now how much time can be saved by using pattern-based development. And, you know, most of the time, we're going to do 80, 90 percent of our work, maybe more, using pattern-based development. But there obviously are going to be uh, many times when you're going to go back and perform some type of uh, customization to that generic uh, data flow, which is uh, completely possible. You can do anything such as joining, uh, uh, aggregating, filtering, whatever it might be, you can do that within the platform uh, to, to customize your data flow. All right, so that, that finishes the second video where we have actually created all the definition for our data flow. In our next video, we're actually going to be building or queuing a build, deploying that build, and watching the target data model be generated and loaded. So stick around, and we'll see you in video number three.